So what is going on people, welcome to episode 34 of the Peter Bree United Career Mode here on FIFA 23, I hope you're doing well, and well today, a bit of a different episode really today, uh, it's just the one game, we're going to change things up a little bit, um, we've played through a busy month of August, had a bit of a mixed start, um, but uh, yeah, we're going to play through today's game with Palace, probably include pretty much the whole game, and then we'll go through deadline day as well. Um, if you are looking forward to this episode, make sure you pop a like on there for me, subscribe to the channel. And well, if we start on the calendar then, this is how the month has unravelled. So, we started with that 4-1 defeat away at Stoke. We then backed that up with a 1-0 win against Luton. We lost in the Carabao Cup to Derby County on penalties, which was a little bit disappointing. I did sim that game. We then drew two all away at Bristol City and I think we came back twice in that one from going behind we then lost 2-1 against Huddersfield before winning 4-2 away at Middlesbrough avenging that big defeat we had last season which leads us today to a game against recently relegated Crystal Palace so uh, yeah that's how things stand at the moment if we have a look at the championship table we sit fifth at uh, fifth we sit 12 after five games that's what i'm trying to say palace up in seventh we're on seven points pretty bang average start to our season um we have conceded quite a few goals which is a little bit worrying but yeah so 12 points at the top of the table five points adrift and then if we look towards the bottom two points middles were sit on so we're just as far from the top as we are from the relegation zone so good to see, I noticed Hull there, undefeated after five, but had four draws. Currently, Bournemouth sitting top of the tree with Brighton there as well. But yeah, Palace, who we played today. There has been a fair bit of business since uh, I was last with you. Nothing coming in, although we will be looking to bring some business in on deadline day. So if we start from the beginning then... And just catch up on what we have seen, but also what we haven't seen. Obviously, we brought in Aaron on a free transfer goalkeeper to be our backup. Ahmed went to Copenhagen for 2.3 million. Same transfer fee for Tilio to Sheffield United. We sold Assad to LAFC for 1.3 million. Zachary Saunders has gone on a year's loan to Porto. McNeil has gone on a year's loan to Bruges. Azuboy has gone to Granada for 1.5 million. I think these up until McNeil we've seen, or you will have seen. So yeah, Adjiboy has gone to Granada, 1.5 million. Uh, young stuff from the academy, Will Daniels has gone on loan to Ruka for a year. Cristobal Guerra has gone to Monaco on a loan to buy deal. Two years his loan is. And if they want to trigger a permanent transfer, it's going to cost them just over £7 million. So that was the question mark we had in the squad. Right back, Guerra has gone on initially on a two-year loan deal. Uh, another youngster from the academy, Devin Bailey, has gone to Michelin for a year. Jack Butland has gone to Hoffenheim for two years on a loan deal. Jamal Lowe has gone to a racing club in Argentina, I believe, for 1.6 million. Jonas David has gone to Levante for 2.1 million. And Lucas Cole has gone to Spau for a year. So we do have four people still available for transfer as we head into deadline day. That is Hassan, Torre, Yearwood and Daniel Johnson and we still have seven players available for loan although Lucas Saunders I think is in discussions to head out on loan as another youngster but yeah we will be looking to do business today um, but for now this is what the squad is looking like Garner's up to 87, Ilias 78, Estrada and Brenner 75, Nezovic 77, Smith is back in um, as well and yeah, we're going to be looking to target that right back area today. But for now, let's go and play Crystal Palace. So for our first trip to Selhurst Park in this save, this is how our host Crystal Palace line up. Dogan Alamdar is in goal for them. A back four of Dallow, Richard, Simican and Adaramola at left back. Dallow playing in the championship is baffling as a Simican really. Monkeola at the base of the midfield. Santiago, Simon and Cochlan. Further ahead of him, Michael Elise out on the right, Ekitike in the middle, and Luca Bacchio on the left. And it's having a look at some options on the bench. 
not too much. They've got Shakiri, Skahiri on the bench there. Like so, Elise, of course, again, don't know how he's playing championship football. But this is how we line up as per normal. And, um, yeah, we've had some mixed, uh, mixed results, of course, but some good performances. Nezovic grabbed his first ever goal for us against Middlesbrough as well. But, yeah, going to be interesting to see how good Palace are, of course, when we played the likes of Bournemouth last season. Admittedly, we did play a rotated side, but they... Uh, they were much better than us as we give the ball away there cheaply. At least say doing the well to get the ball back as a chip ball forward. But it's easy for Dan Bentley to get the ball. And well, big early press from Palace, but we beat it out of the traps. And Smith is going to have to try and cut back if we can. Unfortunately, he's the one that has knocked the ball out of play. Beer yeah, Palace, not having the best of starts, but we are only five games in. When I say not the best of starts, they are still seventh. But yeah, Bournemouth and Brighton at the top of the tree at the moment. Ekatike. I know, I'm not for, like not too familiar with him, but I've seen his name because I know, uh, I think Newcastle in real life are interested in him, but it's a lovely ball. And Garner is there, and Garner will put the ball in the back of the net. And inside 18 minutes... We take a lead. He's had a little slow start to the season by his standards. But uh, he's well and truly... I think that's his second goal of the season. Might well be his third. But either way, the gap was there. Lovely ball in from Elias. And Garner with the composure to slot it in past the keeper. And on our trip down to the capital, it's proving good so far. We'll find Elias. Wait for the overlap. And it comes in the form of Burrows. Estrada is free in the middle there. That's a lovely take. Estrada took too long. I was waiting for the ball to shift onto his right foot. But as it was, it took forever. So I needed to take the shot. But by then, the keeper had uh, closed the angle. And he had made the save. But we take the 1-0 lead into half-time. Certainly a good performance from us against a very good team. A team that would certainly be favoured to go back up automatically at the first time of asking it's a ball there Nezovic needs to get a block in and we do between him and Edwards and the ball goes behind Edwards going to Elise sorry going to offer the short option and Bender will go out to him I get back into Elise stop the shot if we can oh it's done really well and the back heel I was not ready for and I'm not too sure. Number two, whoever that is. It's not Dallow, is it? It is Dallow. The right back, unmarked in the penalty area. The uh, back heel has completely sold me. Just there. And he's got the time and space. Touch and bang. Bentley can do nothing. And Palace are back level in this one. Brady now, the substitute. Koulibaly. Could this be the last for our Garner? Is in behind. Joseph Garner has surely won this game for us. The 91st minute and it's the captain who does it again. Our 40 plus goal striker every season. He's over to the Pom uh, Pompey? Peterborough fans. Well, I said Pompey, I don't know. Bentley is loving it. But that will surely be the winner at Selhurst Park. The, the fans don't seem too happy. But Kudo Bali with a lovely ball played in. He had so much time, Garner. And he has duly applied the finish. And well, this trip to the capital is going to be a fruitful one. It's been a mixed month. But if you can end on a win against a team like Crystal Palace, you've certainly had a good one. I think it's a very good way to cap off the month of August. And Vieira, not a happy bunny. But we take all three points from this one. And well, you'd have to say... They've edged possession. We've had slightly more chances. Maybe a point would have been fair, but we've snatched it at the last. Things you love to see. Right, just a small matter of deadline day now. We've got what well, Calvin Bassey's gone from Ajax to Schalke for just under 30 million. Thiago Diallo from Lille to Brentford for just over 20. And William Jose to Lons for 9 million. So let's have a look at the... Uh... It hasn't taken our get. There we go. I was going to say. So we move up into the playoff places at the end of this month. So it's not been a bad month in general at all. And that's sort of where we're aiming to be this season. 
Bournemouth and Brighton still level pegging at the top. Norwich up there. Luton, who have, as I record this, got promoted to the Premier League. Congratulations to them. Bristol City up there as well. Blackpool. Fulham, Sheffield United Palace not had the best starts to the season. Reading will get there, hopefully. Bolton and Barnsley. Come. Who was the other team that came out? I can't even remember who it was that was in the... Uh, I can't remember. But yeah, anyway. Right. Let's have a look then at this squad and what we need. What we do need is another right back. And it just so happens that my free agent list has dwindled as this month has progressed. I've looked out and about for right backs, but because by the time we kind of realised we needed one, it, I left it a bit too late. So I did have a look at... Um, there was another guy on my list. Bear with me. I was looking at this guy, Danny McNamara, and uh, good overall. Decent as well in terms of value. We've got £30 million to spend, though, so... Uh, value not too much to worry about but good wages as well and um yeah decent athlete as well and uh yeah certainly very much uh, a very good wing back um but i added him to the shortlist i went to buy him and it said Millwall won't sell him because he's too important to the club so uh yeah unfortunately we won't be getting danny mcnamara and that means in that case that the only right back option i have is Martin Montoya, 73 overall, 33 years of age. Is decent physically. He's not a rapid, but then Smith isn't. But he's just good across the board. Certainly, yeah, good crosser of the ball, passing as well. Decent shot power as well. But yeah, very good crosser of the ball. So Montoya is really my only option. The problem is, he's he would be the highest paid player that we would opt for, but it's kind of a case of needs must at this point, and it's not going to completely blow the wage structure. Our top earner is eleven and a half grand a week, so Montoya would come in. I mean, he's got plenty of experience. It's, I'm pretty sure this is the guy that was from Barcelona that went to Betis. So we're going to approach Martin Montoya. He may well not take as much as we need. We'll give him the important because he certainly would duke it out with Smith for that right back role we're going to just offer a one year deal that he's happy with that doesn't want to release clause and he's happy to take 11 grand a week so actually comes in under our highest earner well there we go a good option at right back for us there gets an A rating after sort of having that in my mind of uh, like oh yeah well I'm kind of happy to break the structure a little bit but not much Let's see if anyone else on this list is potentially gettable. Okay, looking through, no. They'd all want more than even Montoya was asking for. So we move on, but some good options on there. St. Graven from Leverkusen, I think. KMB's been on there for a while. Ola Aina, Daniel Barlazer is a really good option. Maleo, Helder Costa, Pena, Vieto, Sigurdsson, Ronnie Lopez, Radonjic. All very good options to have on this list so yeah i'm fairly happy um with what we have on here although i'm just having a look now i don't think to be honest with how good our wingers and everything have got now i don't think maleo probably probably wouldn't need him to be honest and i think the same can be said for hell the costa i think our wingers are good enough going through the middle I think one of these guys would certainly be an upgrade. And uh, I think the same can be said probably for Radonjic as well. So Ronnie Lopez is a good option to have. So that's our list at the moment. If any of them drop their demands, then yeah, we'll uh, we'll certainly look to snap them up. But in terms of the squad, if we have a look, where's Montoya come in? He's there, number two. Very good. Development plan we will give to him. And he's going to go down soon anyway. So doesn't really matter. <laughs> but he's a good enough backup. Right, let's push on then and see what other business can be done. We are still looking to get rid of players. So hopefully some, uh, some bids do come in. And we've had an offer for David Bender from Union Berlin. Oh, they'd actually offer... 
a decent amount for him. And he's a player I'm not smitten with. Let's have a go then, Union Berlin. Let's have a go, shall we? Propose new transfer fee. Give me 9 million and you can have him. We've gone up to 7. Come on, boys. It's only a couple of million. What's that between friends? They're happy to pay it. Right, David Bender could be on his way out of the club. Remember, we brought him in as a free agent, so it would be quite a good signing. Uh, quite, well, good profit, really. And is that Bender going, or is that Saunders? That's Lucas Saunders going out to Middlesbrough. That's fine. That's another youngster that should hopefully, hopefully get some football at the very least. Let's have a look then. Livakovic to Leon, 29 million. Castellanos from New York City to Sassuolo, 27 the ride to Wolfsburg just under 24. More deals being done. Basrami from Empoli to Marseille. And that, I think, is David Bender leaving the building. It is indeed. Well, I don't know how to feel about this because I was just starting to get on side with David Bender. But 9 million from a team that have qualified for the Champions League in real life, but. Going to play in his native Germany. Be in the top flight, I would imagine. Yeah, that's um, David Bender out of the club. Now I have to have a bit of a think. And we've had an offer for Yearwood as well. They're offering us Josh Martin, who's 69 rated. I wouldn't be interested in him. But if we can get 4 million or so for him, he's only valued at 3 so what are they offering us? Three they're offering three million. Okay. Um remove exchange player and we'll see what they can do for us. Yeah, they're happy to pay the plus four million. So Yearwood I was contempl I've noticed Yearwood grown, so I was contemplating maybe including him in the squad, but actually he may well be on his way out as well. Right. Let me go and have a look at this squad. So after much deliberation, yeah, I kind of need a replacement for Bender. And I've trawled through the free agents list. And I found quite a few free agent uh, wingers available. So let's have a look. So some of these were names we removed earlier on the on today, let alone the month. <laughs> but we've got Jordian Bula, who's there, 74, 74 overall. 25 year old Spaniard Malejo is back on the list Sarpreet Singh from New Zealand 74 overall was playing in Germany um, we wouldn't be adverse to bringing in a cam as well because Estrada can play on either wing and it looks like some of these guys have versatility as well Ladero is there 35 years old actually I think I'm going to say no to that one um, Messi is there no, yeah, I thought it was a long shot, but seeing Messi at 86 overall actually makes me a bit sad. But it was worth a try. Rojas is on there, uh, who we removed from a previous thing. El Sharari is there as well. Don't want too much in wages, actually, you know. Radonjic is back on there, as is Alexis Vega, 82 overall. Does want a fair wag. I noticed Miguel Almiron was on the free agents list as well, but I haven't got him scouted. Um, so, yeah, I don't know how sort of what his overall would be, but maybe someone we could scout for, for the future for certain. Um, but, yeah, well, so if any of these guys have realistic wage demands, then maybe we will entertain. Now, I know some of these guys, again, like 14.5K, I think KMB wanted. You know, it's not a lot, but it's still over the top of what we currently got and I don't like to bring in new players earning the most amount of money so I don't know if it's just me being a, I might have to in this occasion to be fair I have to dig down deep and sort of just swallow my tongue as it is so yeah throughout that list we're gonna have to offer someone some bucks we just need to work out who that person is gonna be and out of all the people that I have uh, narrowed it down to, I think 
I am going to offer it to Malejo. 74 rated, so can play on either flank or up front. Only 23. He's an absolute speed merchant as well. And he's got very good stamina, good attacking positioning. Decent crossing, decent finishing as well. Um, a speed dribbler trait as well. High defensive work rate as well, which is good. Left pegged, so yeah. Um, but yeah, I think comparing the lot, I think Malejo is probably what we can afford to bring in. So let's have a look. He wants important. Oh, he's not going to be really important. I'll actually... Sporadic. No. Okay. Counter. Rotation. He wants important. We'll have to give it to him then. We'll offer him... He wants a four-year deal. To be fair, he's only 23. So I'll give him that. Disregard the least scores right. Oh, let's... It said minimum was 14. But if I offer too... I don't want to offer too low. Oh, what about 12? 12 and a, a healthy signing bonus. Give you 150 grand as a signing bonus. He's happy with that. Maybe the signing bonus sweetened him, but yeah. So he is coming in to be our highest paid player, Victor Mayejo. But it's only... An extra 500 quid a week from what the previous press, previous best was earning. So actually, do you know what? I don't mind that at all. So there we go then. A gap in the squad filled. Victor Malejo is in. We've given him the number nine shirt. But yeah, so let's go back on track then with deadline day. Bit of a sidetrack. Kirantini from Barcelona to Leipzig, 44 million. And we've had a couple of offers. One for Hassan, 930 grand. Well, it's more than he's worth from Empoli, so we'll certainly take it. Can't get much more for him. And one for Ronnie Edwards from Saint Etienne. And again, we sold David Bender for 9 million. Director of football doesn't think. We can get anywhere near my 9 million. And I'd probably, arguably, want about 10 million. So, it's a no for Ronnie Edwards, I'm afraid. No, Okafor went Brian Brobby for 62.5 million to Dortmund. Wow. Another bid for Edwards, this time from Fulham. And again, it's going to be a no from me. Some big deals going on. There is to Villarreal for... My Henrique to Leeds, 13 million. Splashing the cash upon their promotion back to the Premier League. Xavi Simmons to Frankfurt for 56 million. And there goes Drew Yearwood. He was the one out of all the suggestions that we brought in last summer. He was the one that I kind of had hope for. But unfortunately just didn't really grow out at Leeds. So I think we've made a bit of profit on him. But he'll go out to Norwich and hopefully... He'll have a decent career, you know. As a young Englishman, always be nice to see him go on. And Hassan hasn't gone to Empoli. Talks there have broken down for whatever reason, which is a little bit disappointing. But as we wind down transfer deadline date, doesn't look like too much is going to happen. Skriniar going late to Barcelona for 66 million. And I think, oh, Enzo, Benfica to Arsenal, 76 and Smith Rowe to West Ham for 52 million as well. Blimey. Okay. Big deals going down on deadline day. But that, if we move forward, there we go. Transfer window has closed. Do a little bit of training. Why not? And we've got some emails to read as well. But yeah, the window's done. Let's just have a quick look at some of these players. So there we go then, that wraps up today's episode. We've picked up a 2-1 win over Crystal Palace and had a pretty fruitful deadline day, I would say, as well. A couple of new additions that, one we expected, one we certainly didn't expect. Um, but yeah, so all in all, very happy with the squad. We're going to have to have a little rejig now that Bender's gone and see where the some of the new players may fit into the equation. But, uh, I mean, if we just put... I'm going to try Montoya for a bit and see how he gets on. Um, Fuchs is up there as well. Some players that we didn't really get rid of. Yeah, didn't get rid of Hassan Torre or Johnson. 
um, and some youngsters that we didn't get out on loan either. So hopefully some bids will come in for them over the next few uh, next few weeks and that heading into December. But there we go. So if we have a look, we've already had a look at the table. If we have a look at what is to come though, this month, well, I think we'll yeah we'll do the whole of this month. As an episode, why not? We'll try and get through a bit quicker this season. So yeah, we'll do the whole month there, the whole month there, do the whole month there. And maybe I'll do similar to today, what I did in the month of December. Maybe we'll play Bournemouth. See who's top of the tree when it comes to December. But yeah, so we'll cover the next three months in all three episodes. We'll probably sim the barns of the game um, and then play the other three. But... That is what's to come, guys. If you have enjoyed this episode, make sure you pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next one.